Hi, my name is John Kelly from JVC Professional. I'm General Manager uh, for UK based in London. Um, at VVE this year, uh, we're showcasing all of our latest technologies on the booth. Um, just to give you a quick overview, then firstly, um, we have uh, our a wide range of production monitors. Uh, JVC have a very long history in supplying production monitors uh, for broadcast, post-production, and general production. So we have a wide range of monitors, including uh, 3G support with waveform monitor vectorscope. So really suitable uh, for all and every time of production application. Second area uh, we're showing today is on our studio solutions. So um, we can offer an end-to-end -end studio solution. So this starts from the front end um, with um, studio camera solutions. Um, this is a GY HM790 studio camera solution. We can connect this either via a fiber system as we have here or as a multi-core. Um, this gives you full studio capability with um, talkback, tally, intercom systems, all fully supported within the solution. The fiber system in particular is, ve uh, is of interest for live events, obviously fiber being uh, robust and lightweight cable connectivity. Uh, Multi-core solutions, very popular in uh, corporate education um, and those kind of studio applications. On uh, the back end of the studio, again, we have all of the key studio components. Vision mixing uh, with our KMH3000 12 channel um, HD and SD vision mixer. Monitoring, uh, we have uh, again, uh, beside the production monitors, a wide range of large format monitors often used in, in production galleries nowadays. Um, you can see the output of the vision mixer has a multi viewer. So this is built into the functionality of the vision mixer itself. And then on the back end, uh, we have a range of recording devices. This is a Blu-ray HDSDI recording device. This is quite a unique product in the market. So if you want to take a program output, record it directly down to Blu-ray, the SR HD 2500 is the model which allows you to do that. So in the camera range, what I'd particularly like to introduce you to um, is two new models, the GY HM600 and the GY HM650. These are um, very much uh, similar in their basic design. The 650 adds in some additional features which I'll explain in a moment. Both cameras, however, um, starting at the front end, have um, fantastic Fujin and 23 times lens, 20, 29 mil at the widest, um, very, very high quality optics, um, proper three ring system for lens control. Front end of the camera has three CMOS sensors, full HD resolution, 1920 by 1080. Um, this in particular gives you fantastic low light capability, F12 at 2000 lux. So if you are shooting in challenging light conditions, these are an excellent choice for doing so. Um, from a recording point of view, then the media type is SDHC. So we're using commercially available um, low cost media format. So whether you're, you know, need to pick up some media at a local store or an airport, we have commercially available media to use. Onto the media, we can record um, in parallel. So we can record the same content for backup. We can record in series. We can do continuous recording with no drop frames. Um, recording down onto the card, both cameras support 35 megabit MPEG-2 recording. Um, this can be wrapped either as a QuickTime or as a .mp4 file format. So whether you're an Apple user or whether you're using a PC-based editing system, EDIUS, Premiere, for example, or Avid, then you have full compatibility with those solutions. But what this 650 adds in, which is some of the particularly interesting functionality, the 650 has two codec paths within the camera. What this allows us to do is record different resolutions or types to each one of the two different cards. So for example, one might record uh, high definition to one card and then standard definition to another. Or for example, record HD to the first card and then a quarter resolution proxy file to the second card. And that might particularly be useful or of interest because the other feature that the 650 adds in is network capability. So down at this point of the camera, if you can see here, there's a USB network host. This allows us to plug in, for example, uh, a 3G dongle, a 4G dongle, 
a wireless LAN dongle, as we're doing here, or even a hardwired LAN connector. So what this allows us to do, firstly, um, is control the camera. So through a device like an iPad or an Android tablet or an iPhone, you have camera control, you can control zoom, you can start stop recording. So if you're doing self-op self stuff, you can do that quite easily. But what this also allows you to do is FTP file transfer from the camera to a remote location. So let's say, for example, um, you go out in the field, you do a shoot, you could go back to your car with your 3G or 4G dongle and FTP transfer any file back to base, maybe particularly the low resolution proxy, because of course the bandwidth of that will be, will be uh, more efficient to transfer. But you can transfer any file through the FTP. And one other feature will be added in a couple of months time around April is live streaming capability. So one will actually be able to stream live at the same time um, as the camera is recording. And this sort of for live events, for live streaming, this can be really an interesting add on to the camera as well. Firmware upgrade free of charge. So simply download the upgrade to SD memory, put it in your camera and it will update to give you that functionality.